Hey guys, it's Damien. Um, I'm back with another video. I actually started to film a video on the Cottage Kitchen Laws for California. Um, I was going to do a series um, of videos in regards to the different laws and regulations. If you're looking to start from your home and grow a business, um, kind of like as I did. Um, so what I did is put together, I'm looking down at my computer, a handful of information. <clears throat> this information is going to give you a great head start to understand how the cottage kitchen laws work within your state. I am going to do every state uh, one at a time. And so, sorry, I'm out of breath. Came running upstairs. Okay, here we go. I'll get right to the point. I don't want to waste your time or mine. So, in California, they have really good laws in regards to home-based businesses that are preparing food products. Now, there are some things you need to be aware of. Um, in your specific uh, municipality, in your county, in your city, uh, double check because they also set up specific laws that you have to follow and abide by. Um, in regards to like water usage, um, if you're on a septic tank or city water, there's a lot of factors that come into play, but those are not regulated necessarily by cottage kitchen law. Um, every state sets their own. Uh, some states, I believe it's three, three or four of them, don't have any laws that do not allow you to make any type of food in your home at all. So, uh, with that being said, <clears throat> they have a handful of allowed foods. There are certain food products that you can make in a cottage kitchen, certain food products that you cannot. So, I put together some information here, so I'm looking down at my, my screen. Uh, just kind of bear with me. Um, the allowed foods that you can do are things such as biscuits, cakes, and pizzelle cookies, rolls, uh, brownies, and breads. <clears throat> Um, the thing of it is, is that uh, a lot of times um, anything that has uh, potentially hazardous, it's, it's what it's classified as potentially hazardous food, um, such as raw meats or <clears throat> raw eggs, uh, things that you would traditionally find like at a restaurant, I'll, I'll kind of make it easier to understand. Those types of food products that have to be cooked in that sense are not allowed to be sold through um, a cottage kitchen in the state of California. Um, in regards to candies, you can do like brittles and chocolates. Cotton candies, buttercream frostings, um, fudge, ground chocolate, uh, toffees, caramels, and, and such truffles as well. Um, condiments, if you are wanting to produce some type of condiment um, out of your home in a cottage kitchen setting, like honeys and syrups, mustards and vinegars, and nut butters. Uh, right now, very popular, by the way, are nut butters, uh, almond butters. Um, walnuts and cashew and tahini, that type of stuff that's made um, with different types of nuts that are ground up. Very, very popular. But in California, yes, you can do those. If you have some type of a dry good, like a cereal, dried vegetables um, that are basically dehydrated. Um, you can also do coffees, herbs, pastas, mixes. Mixes like dips, soup mixes, baking mixes, stuff that you can pre kind of formulate, put into a bag, and then someone takes it home and then prepares it at home. Those things you can. Uh, spices and seasonings. Now, when it comes to pastries, you can do like churros, uh, pies, cones. Uh, the one thing about pastries, uh, no fillings or toppings that require refrigeration. So again, that goes back to spoilage. If it's a product, an ingredient that goes into making a product that could spoil without refrigeration, that is not prohibited. Or that's not allowed. It's prohibited. Um, <clears throat> empanadas, um, but you can only do them with fruit. You can't do them with meat. Again, goes back to the raw meat and the raw ingredient that has to be cooked. Uh, what they do is... I've noticed in, in almost every state it's actually the same, is in regards to hazardous, potentially hazardous foods. When you're cooking meats, they have to be cooked at a certain temperature and they got to reach a certain temperature to make sure that they are uh, able to be consumed. Um, under the laws that dictate for cottage kitchens, the thing about it is, is that most people who start a cottage kitchen are not fully trained um, in food safe um, type of certification programs. Uh, that's kind of the next level <clears throat> when you go into a more com like a commercial facility and you're looking to get a food service license where you can actually – it goes by different names um, in each state. But it, the, gist, the gist of it is basically the type of license that would allow you to cook foods in a sense kind of like a caterer would do at a commercial facility, a restaurant would do at a restaurant. Um, but – Everything that gets done and prepared, there has to be someone on the premises who has been trained and understands and knows how to handle raw meats, raw chicken, uh, beef, 
So what they try to do within cottage kitchens is to eliminate and prohibit um, the average person, I guess you could say, uh, that doesn't have the training because they just don't want someone to work with those types of hazardous uh, items that need to be refrigerated or kept cold at certain temperatures. <laughs> then you're getting into the the that type of facility needs has a totally different type of license and also has a different type of um, requirement in order for you to operate that type of thing. So simple things if you're looking to do um, preserves, nut butters, fruit butters, uh, candied apples. Um, you can also do like pretzels and crackers, nuts and seeds. If you're like if you're in, in, into seasoning uh, different nuts and seeds and you've got a line of products that you want to come out with like a trail mix type of thing, that's also allowed. Marshmallows, again, <clears throat> ingredients to make that is not going to be hazardous. So you can kind of get the gist of what you can do in a cottage kitchen in California. <clears throat> now we get to like to prohibited foods. If you're looking to do pickling, like chutneys, carbonated drinks, uh, fermented foods, um, let's say um, – you're doing cabbage that's going to become like a, you're doing a coleslaw, something to that effect. Those are not allowed. Um, there are a handful of other uh, prohibited foods, and again, you'll get a more specific list of what you can and can't make by your local um, <clears throat> Department of Agriculture office, um, if it, that's what they use in, in your area. Uh, predominantly across the country, each state utilizes the Department of Agriculture to regulate and inspect these facilities. And also the licensing comes in <clears throat> in regards to the county that you're in. Uh, here where I'm at, um, when we had started out, it was the zoning and planning was the name of it. Um, a lot of these departments go by different names, <clears throat> but they do the same kind of thing. So check with them locally and you'll get more specific information. This, this will kind of give you an idea of how cottage kitchens generally work. So... The other thing to keep in mind, in California, when you have a cottage kitchen you're operating, they also can limit the amount of sales, a dollar amount. Uh, right now it's $50,000 a year, which is not that bad. It's, it's pretty pretty good if you're just starting, if you're doing this as a hobby or part-time, uh, $50,000 a year you can do in sales. When you exceed that, you'd have to look into getting some type of a different license and going into more of a commercial facility because the volume of what you're doing within your home is really exceeding what they want you to do. Um, also, the other thing about the, the facility itself, when you, when you set up your kitchen, not every state is going to inspect it. And that's kind of interesting. I'll touch on that in a little while. Um, every state doesn't necessarily inspect it. Uh, the most part, I would probably say 75% of the country doesn't have to inspect the, the, the kitchen. But they also set things up, restrictions and limitations such as having children uh, are not allowed during the working period in that kitchen. They're not allowed in there. Um, inter-county sales are restricted like in California you're only able to sell within the counties um, in your state a lot of times they don't uh, certain states won't allow you to go from like say California to Nevada or California to New Mexico or uh, California to Washington State and, and then sell your products that's not allowed with the cottage kitchen laws um, pets of course pets are not allowed within a facility that's going to be um, <clears throat> considered a cottage kitchen and that's kind of common sense I mean you don't want uh, your birds flying around if you have birds or if you have dogs or cats uh, jumping around the utensils and the products that you're using to prepare food um, of course smoking is not allowed any in the kitchen at any time um, and specifically in, in California you cannot do that as well you also cannot have many employees as, as you want uh, usually states with this restriction allow only one employee so if you're opening a cottage kitchen and you've got an employee and um, they're on the on, on the books and you're paying them and such, they'll limit the amount of employees that you have. And again, that goes back to um, whether it is a commercial facility or if it's a cottage kitchen because there's kind of a fine line. <clears throat> when you begin to have five or six or ten employees, <clears throat> you're not really considered a cottage kitchen anymore. Um, your your production obviously has increased, so the amount of sales has increased. Everything's increased to the point where you'd be better off in, in a facility that's licensed as a commercial production facility. Okay, um, environmental health department. So in California, you want to contact um, to apply and register for the permit, the local health department. So environmental health department, you will also come into, <clears throat> depends on the type of class. Every state is different. Again, like I said, California, though, has a class A and class B type of um uh, structure set up based upon the type of facility that you have. Um, they have certain cert certifications that you need to also have 
and they run between about 100 to about $200 to get that. Most of that can actually be done online. <clears throat> the other thing to think about is if you're in a home that is on a septic tank, um, you're going to probably have an inspection by the county to come out because what happens is, is um, on top of the normal usage of water within your home, your cottage kitchen facility uh, becomes also a user of more water and there's more waste and there's also grease and butter and those types of things that can go into a septic tank. Um, it's not exactly the most glamorous thing to talk about, but at the end of the day, it will happen and you will have an inspection for that. And they want to know just how much are you going to be producing and how much is going into the septic tank because it's not set up for a commercial styled uh, facility. Um, so more water in, more of those waste products from food preparation. It could cause potential environmental issues with <clears throat> your septic tank not working properly and all that good stuff. If you're on a city water and you've got a different type of drainage system, that's a totally different ballgame. And again, you need to let them know when you apply for the license what type of, uh, of water you've got. And they pretty much have that on the books as far as what's considered. Now, um, a home inspection, you're going to get, if you're a Class B um, in California, you're getting a cottage kitchen license, you're considered a Class B, you would need to get their home kitchen inspected. So that is something you need to understand that you will have an inspection for that as well. Um, if you're on a private well, the water will be tested because what they want to do, which is actually cost you additional fees, <clears throat> they will test the well water that you're on. And the reason being is that they don't know the quality of the water that you're utilizing to go into the home. And when you're preparing food or some type of, of candy or food product, for others to consume, it's a totally different ball game. So the city will step in on their behalf and to make sure that that water is uh, sufficiently filtered, clean, and that it's working properly and all that. So to be honest with you, don't let all this scare you. It's uh, it's just formalities and it's things that you know the little hoops you got to jump through. Um, uh, it, you should just go at it with an open mind and don't be afraid to have all this stuff done. Just know what you're dealing with and know your property, know your know your home and know what you're working on, and it makes the whole process a lot easier. Now, when you go to labeling and products, this is where it's kind of <clears throat> across the board going to be the same in pretty much every state. Um, you need to have allergens. <clears throat> this is kind of a no-brainer. Um, you need to let people know what is in the facility they're dealing with because if someone has an allergy to a certain tree nut or a certain like peanut or something to that effect, it needs to be stated on the label. So your business address, your business name, the county name, uh, where you are at, <clears throat> basically the, the county in which your uh, cottage kitchen license is issued, um, the ingredients that you've got in that specific product, let's just say it's chocolate chip cookies, um, you've got flour, you've got salt, you've got butter, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all of that needs to be spelled out and that needs to be on your label. Um, the net amount of what is inside the package, that's, that's minus the weight of the package that it is put into. And when you see net weight, it is, the, it is the actual weight of the product, not the packaging the product is in. Um, the product name, you got to have a name on it. it. Obviously, if it's chocolate chip cookies, it needs to state that. Um, one of the neat things uh, that you need to have on there, I say neat, but it, it's something that you need to specify is that it's made in a home kitchen. Um, that separates your labeling from a commercial facility. The reason why I say that is that when you've got a consumer who is buying the product, they need to know where, what type of facility it's produced in. Um, when you have a mass-produced product like Oreo cookies, they're put in. They're being made in a facility where um, <clears throat> they can just basically state the address in which it was made, um, because it gets an inspection from the state. It gets a third-party inspections. It gets numerous inspections. When you make it in a home kitchen, you're not really being inspected um, at, to that extent as a commercial facility. So they need to know that it's a home kitchen as opposed to a commercial facility. And then, <clears throat> of course, the product name, lastly, is the statement, um, which is kind of the disclaimer, which is what I was just going over. You want to make sure that everybody knows that it's not produced in a commercial mass-produced facility. So I hope that that kind of gives you the gist. That's kind of a breakdown of what you can do in California. Um, if you're looking for more information, I'm going to put some of these reference and resource information in the description below.
I don't want to take up any more of your time. I hope that that was informative for you. Uh, like I said, I'm going to do other states as well. And um, give me a thumbs up if you like my videos. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. Perfectly fine with me. I appreciate you watching, and do subscribe. If you have friends or family member who are looking to do some type of food product, tell them about my, my channel. Uh, let them know. And also, guys, I do have – I just started offering email consulting. Um, it's kind of a different way to touch base with me one-on-one. -on -one. It's more convenient. Um, I don't have a tremendous amount of time <clears throat> available to do – I get booked up very quickly to do one-on-one uh, -on -one consulting uh, through the phone. Uh, but I do have it's twenty I think it's twenty nine ninety nine a month, and it's actually email consulting, and, and I can touch base with you uh, all month long uh, with any questions that you've got. Um, it's convenient for me because I can just correspond with you as quick as I can on a daily basis. Um, I'll put some information about where you can touch base with me about that. Um, so I hope that helps, and I thank you guys. Take care.